Greetings, members one and all of the Salivation Nation. Where does gold come from? Let's explore! Yes, this is a topic that we have covered before in this channel quite some time ago. But this is somewhat of an updated article here from Gainesville Coins. And uh, as shared with me by Steve Gerard, it's a very interesting indeed. Um, and some of the topics here and information may be a bit controversial uh, as based off some of the theories, as we can see in the first sentence here. But uh, we're going to cover them, not necessarily get into the debate, none of, uh, but essentially talking about the um, uh, what people are thinking as far as rarity of where gold has come from and where it is now on the earth. It is theorized that gold arrived on earth via interstellar dust in an asteroid impact billions of years ago. It is a yellow colored precious metal mainly found in our earth's crust. Now other people say that it comes from interstellar dust and also stars as well. Many people want to know where gold comes from. Of course the answer is harder to explain away than whimsically saying that a stork delivers gold to the mint, or that just gold comes from the stars. Gold was discovered many thousands of years ago and is the earliest recorded metal used by humans. There are trace amounts of gold in Spanish mines that date back to 40,000 BC. By the end of the 5th millennium uh, BC, gold was turning up in a variety of artifacts. Today, it's used in everything from coins to jewelry to medicines and electronics. Gold is found in rock ores that date back to the Precambrian era, which is 4.6 billion to 541 million years ago. It was a period when asteroids bombarded Earth. Upon impact, these asteroids deposited high concentrations of gold deep into the crust. And keep in mind, that's based off the evolutionary theory. Um, so we don't know how much scientific evidence really is to support some of this. Uh, where is gold found? It's often found with other metals, namely silver. They can be embedded in rocks with quartz or sulfide minerals. This includes railgar, stibonite, and pyrite which is also known as fool's gold. Uh, look at this, you can see it here, how it's caked on this particular rock. That's pretty cool. It almost looks like it's been uh, put on there like a um, like icing on a donut. You will even find gold coins. You'll find gold in the oceans, which contains more than 20 million tons of the precious yellow metal. But the gold there is so diluted, it is presently infeasible to collect it from water profitably. And no one knows how much is found below the ocean on the floor and below that. But we've actually talked about that as well, too. Amazingly, gold is even found in humans who have about 0.2 milligrams of gold, a very tiny quantity. The most conventional location where gold is harvested is the Earth's crust. Often found, uh, gold is there in deposits known as lodes. You've heard the term mother load. That's where that uh, is familiar. These are rich pockets of gold found in rock fissures or cracks. These include rock formations or veins found between layers of rock. Flakes or even entire nuggets get sorted out in streams of water that originate near or run through these rich gold deposits. This is how many people find gold when painting for it in rivers and streams. These gold deposits are found all over the world with several notable sites in the United States. Included are North Georgia, the Western Carolinas, the Rockies, part of Nevada, and much of California. One of the first gold rushes came in 1799 when gold was found in North Carolina. About 30 years later, a major gold rush hit Northern Georgia. Then in 1848, a carpenter and sawmill operator named James Wilson Marshall uh, 
reportedly reported finding gold in the American River near Sutter's Mill. This discovery took place on January the 24th, 1848, in the town of Coloma, California. It kicked off the Great California Gold Rush, luring thousands of prospectors to the region throughout the mid-1850s. You will notice that these two places, Georgia and California, uh, laid the foundations for uh, mints to be formed in Georgia and in San Francisco, California. The men in Georgia has since closed down. Many of those early discoveries of gold came by way of panning for it in rivers or even finding nuggets lying on the ground. Yet commercial scale operations required heavy mining activity. That became big business in places like Northern California and the Sierra Nevada Mountains in Western Nevada. In the late 19th century, gold mining also expanded into other areas, including the Rockies. Gold was discovered in the Yukon Territory around the turn of the 20th century, drawing countless prospectors there, too. Gold is relatively scarce. Now, it's kind of refreshing to say that because it's not the rarest of the metals out there. Platinum is more rare, but it is less expensive these days. The U.S. has been fortunate to see several significant gold deposits. Many of them provided billions of dollars in modern-day dollars of gold. This helped spur economic growth in places that were once little more than outposts, posts, and villages. And various periods of massive gold production in the United States also led to a considerable increase in the number of gold coins made by the United States Mint. And in, it inspired the construction of mint facilities in places like Carson City, Nevada, Charlotte, Dolanoga, Denver, and San Francisco. Today, much of the world's gold comes from other nations around the world. These include China, Russia, Australia, South Africa, and various countries in South America. The world's deepest gold mine, by the way, is in South Africa. At this time, about 3,000 tons of gold is mined each year, which represents approximately 5.4 cubic meters. To put into perspective just how small an amount of, gold, of pure gold that is, a small sidewalk tree planter will contain one or two cubic meters of soil. If all the gold ever mined in the world were to be stuffed into one big room, that space would not need to be much larger than a 70-foot cube. In fact, I've heard 72-foot cube. That's about the amount of space in a small suburban mid-rise building. In other words, there is not a lot of gold to go around for Earth's growing population of nearly, nearly 8 billion people. And again, gold isn't only, only used for coins, jewelry, and royal uh, baubles. It has many important uses. It's a critical metal and one that's relatively rare. So it's no wonder why it costs so much, and it has for many, many years. So, the, where does gold come from? The scarcity makes it hard to find and expensive to mine. But there are plenty of places one can go to see how mining operations work. The Lanega, Georgia, where thousands of people converged during the gold rush, has a, the Lanega Gold Museum historical site. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that word. I know it was correct, told what the pronunciation was, but I've since uh, forgotten there, one can view a complete collection of gold coins struck by the mint there, and I'd like to see that. This branch mint operated in the city from 1838 through 1861. About a mile away is the Consolidated Gold Mine, which operated around the turn of the 20th century. Now it gives gold mining tours and takes visitors more than 200 feet underground. One can pan for gold there as well. Out west, one will find a bevy of gold mining tours. Of course, one of the best places any gold buff should go is the Gold Discovery State Historic Park in Coloma, California, which is where the gold rush in the state originated. Perhaps the most common question many people ask when touring these places would be, is there still gold there? Yes, tons of it. The problem is that it's either too deep to reach economically, 
or it is only readily available in small quantities. This makes it non-viable for major commercial operations to mine it, but gold is still there. In these and other places where gold mining was once a primary industry, people are still successfully painting for gold in rivers and streams. It's pretty surprising that a lot of this stuff has been picked over. But, uh, and also, it's something to consider and to think about when you um, think about uh, how gold, how the demand for gold has, has increased for all these years. And shows have been made about it. And uh, people have been... Um, theorizing, speculating that gold may be hidden away uh, in protected lands like parkland. For instance, the Grand Canyon has been theorized there's uh, plenty of gold there to be had underneath our oceans and, and so many other places that are inaccessible. And uh, so it's very interesting and fascinating. But gold, it has it's certainly captivated uh, mankind for millennia and uh, it is a rare and fascinating uh, uh, material. But essentially, I think most can agree that essentially it is not something that it was originally on the Earth, unless it perhaps may have formed within the magma in the core of the Earth and was brought forth from within. And uh, But you don't hear too much talk about that. Usually you talk about it from the origins uh, formed from the Earth itself, from the stars. And uh, so, so it is very interesting and fascinating. I'm sure there's people that will debate this for quite some time to come. But nonetheless, make no mistake, gold is rare. You can't just create it out of thin air. And um, it is something that will continue to captivate man for a long time. So there you have it. Very fascinating indeed. Thanks again, Steve, for this interesting article. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch. And encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.